Thank you and good morning. Well, I'm very honored and I'm very overwhelmed by the kindness that you extended to me. I was listening to all the presentations. Uh, criticism is part of my life, anybody's life, I guess, but I get a little bit extra <laughs> than everybody else. Uh, many ways, uh, and I have to live with it because I have chosen that. Like one of the major criticism that I had back in the early days of Grameen Bank, why do I lend money to women? So this was a kind of a attack, a combined attack of, of men. They didn't like it. Then it turned into a religious attack because I'm converting women into something our religious leaders didn't want, the women to stand on their feet. And they said it is against religion. So that was a very serious acquisition when you live in a Muslim country and uh, <clears throat> working with the women. And they say it's against religion. Everybody focuses on you. So we have to come up with a way how to handle that. Luckily, we found a way, and which was pretty effective. I started saying that uh, <clears throat> Prophet Muhammad, in his early years, in his young youth age, he worked under a woman. He took a job under a woman, a businesswoman. And later on, she married her. And I said, if you want to be a good Muslim, you have to follow the footsteps of the Prophet. First, you have to work under a woman. That's what the Prophet did. Then you have to marry a businesswoman. <laughs> Since Bangladesh doesn't have many businesswomen, if you are looking for them, don't find it. Find them. Come to us. We have plenty of them. So this is just to give an example. Many of the things come because of the way you think you organize your life. Something different happens, you become suspicious. So today I'm lucky because all the criticism that I had in Germany, now those criticisms will not come to me, it will come to Professor Rademacher. <laughs> he has to handle all those. I got involved with lending money to the poor people, not because of any theory or anything, not a plan. It is a spur of the moment action which got me into it. Out of the desperate situation, people want to do some action which out of desperation, which doesn't have many logic, any sense, but you do it. And that's what I did. It's a loan sharking in the village next to the university campus where I was teaching. And so ugly to see that. Tiny little money given to the poor people. And in exchange, you take control of their life. Grab everything that they got by the means of lending money. And you become a witness to it. Every day you go there, see that every new cases come to you. You feel very frustrated that it goes on. And then you realize it's not something happens in this village. This is all over the country. It's all over the world. And you can't do anything. For centuries, this goes on. And suddenly it came to my mind, I can do something. Why don't I lend the money myself? If I lend the money, they will come to me. They don't have to go to loan sharks. So they will be free. As soon as that thought came, I started doing that. I took money from my pocket and started lending money. And people liked that. They started coming in numbers to get more money from me. 
I liked it because I thought this is useful to them. They are happy. So I gave more money as much as, much as the money I had. But in a couple of months, I ran out of my money. So I thought, what do I do now? I thought, Ben should do that. There's a first thought came that Ben should do that. I go to the bank, and the rest is history. They opposed it, said they are not creditworthy, and so on. Finally, I offered myself as a guarantor. I said, I'll sign all the papers. You give the money, and I take the risk. If they don't pay back, I pay back. That was in 1976. That's how it all began. But the bank became very reluctant since it becomes bigger and bigger. They thought all this money will be down, go down the drain. It will never come back. So I thought, now that I know that people do pay back, every penny is being paid back, why don't I create a bank? In 1983, we created the bank called Grameen Bank. And then it expanded and expanded. We are very happy now that we have a bank at our hand. I'll just mention a few things about the bank so that people who accuse the bank or the microcredit can understand what we do. Bank is owned by the borrowers. There are eight and a half million borrowers in Grameen Bank today, and they are the owners of the bank. Bank makes profit, profit goes back to the borrowers as a dividend because they are the owners of the bank. So there's no way somebody's taking away their money. So it's not the kind of corporate situation where there's one group of shareholders, another group of customers. It's not like that. And we give out, we started out with $27, if you recall our history. Today, after 38 years, we lend out over $1.5 billion a year. And none of this money comes from outside. That's another beauty of the bank. The bank is self-supporting. We take the deposits and lend the money. So it's not taking away anybody's money, it's a donor money or something. We are not in competition with anybody else. We get plenty of money. Sometimes banks' problem is to how, where to put this money, rather than banks' problem is how to find money. We never had a problem of how to find money. But we also encourage the borrowers to save in the bank. Every week, every borrower has to save something in the bank. And the varieties of deposit schemes for them, exciting schemes packages. So this little money grows. And it used to be substantial amount that loan that we gave out came from their own deposits. That's our traditional way that we looked at it. But this year something very interesting happened. But the middle of this year, we have a situation where borrowers have more in deposits than the loan that we give out. We give out one and a half billion dollars. They have 1.6 billion dollars in the bank. And it's growing. So still we use the same language and our staff use the same language. How many borrowers, what is such, such, such. So I raised the question, do you still call them borrowers? Because they lent you more money then you lend them. So they are the net lenders to the bank. So see how table has changed again? So when people look at Grameen Bank, it's not something that they're looking for money to bring it to the poor people. It's their own money. So the reason I'm saying that if people keep criticizing us, what we do, it doesn't really rub onto our skin. Because we do our own thing, we don't bother anybody, it's our money, we do it in no way. But people want to imitate what Grameen Bank does. They get very embarrassed when the attack comes. I try to tell them that, look, 